He's up on a piece of your seat. Um, there's this other person who I got a chance to work with many, many moons back. She was working with Leo Burnett at that point of time, and we were doing a poster shoot, and she, her standard line to me, stand straight. What are you doing? Stop being an actor. Just, just, just stand straight and let us shoot our poster. And over the years, she's become this prolific filmmaker. She started with Neil Bhatte Sanate, has made some, one of my personal favorite films. She's, it's, have you all heard of this film called Bareli Ki Barfi? Give it up for Ashwini Ayer Tiwari joining us. Come on up, Ashwini Ayer Tiwari. Gosh, I took you way long back, didn't I? Very long back. We have another powerhouse who's coming straight on the heels of, you know, making this successful show called Rocket Boys and also this successful film called Chatterjee. Ladies and gentlemen, somebody who likes Parsis and because of that, I like her. Monisha Adwani, can we have you on stage, please? Heavy, heavy on the heels of her very much talked about important film. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to call upon Ashima Chibar, the director of Chatterjee vs. State. Norway State. They go. Jo next aara na, uske liye maine kuch khas likha hai just so that I can, you know, be in her good books. Very, 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 very popular person. You all will know. Popularly known as Athiloka Sundari, this actress is one of the brightest and most promising stars of the Indian cinema. She has navigated her journey at her own terms across all languages of India, working with the biggest stars across. We are pleased to welcome none other than Ms. Rakul Preet Singh. And now I'm going to call upon the man uh, who every man in this whole conference today will be envious of because he'll be seated amongst these fantastic ladies and having a conversation with them. I mean, what would men not give to be having that seat? But Nakul, we are very proud that you are having that seat. Ladies and gentlemen, Nakul Mehta, one of the best faces we have on celluloid, Indian TV, and one of the most well-spoken, articulate, sensitive men. He told me to say this. Now, after you can see this session, it's bad or not. Nakul, how envious am I of you right now? Personally, at least. I don't know about the other men, but congratulations. Have a great session. Ladies and gentlemen, she leads. A very good afternoon. It, I think uh, post-lunch sessions are usually the hardest for everybody. Uh, <laughs> we're struggling to sleep and sometimes just, you know, having spent a busy morning. But please bring yourself some coffee. It's going to be an interesting session. I will try to speak minimum. And uh, feel free to interject me, stop me, uh, ignore me. I am here. Uh, you know, I think Fiki Frames has been very kind. Uh, we are in this country, we are very, very, very used to having manuals, right? And it wouldn't be surprising if you would have a panel of men speaking about women in filmmaking. But we went the other way and we said we'll get all these trailblazers and champions of storytelling and filmmaking, you know, to really uh, talk to us about it. And just so that no, man cries foul, they threw me for representation, <laughs> right? So, uh, uh, I mean, I, I really don't know how I qualify to do this. I'm, I'm, I'm someone who owes my career uh, and any kind of sort of success or stardom to television, which again has been built because of amazing collaborations and partnerships with some splendid women who have uh, hemmed and produced and written and directed. Uh, all the work I've done on television, right? And very rarely do we get rooms like this, such beautiful rooms, where we can uh, maybe take another half a minute and talk about them and champion them. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly name these people who've been like uh, the, the, the reason I, you know, I've had some kind of career. So starting from my first producer, Kavita Barjatia, to Gule Nagma, Khan, Gule Nagma Khan, to Ekta Kapoor, to my writers, Mukta Dhon, Nikita Dhon, Deepa, Sarita Tanwar, Yukti Anand, uh, Harneet Singh, uh, Fatima, uh, uh, Rohini ma'am, the bunch of amazing trailblazers. And uh, from those trailblazers to, to these, right? Uh, I'm going to start off by telling you about, uh, I'm not telling you, I mean, all of you know it, film students here, film uh, appreciators. Uh, from the days of Raja Harish Chandra, right? Indian cinema's first film where the female characters were portrayed by all men to uh, today having a number of incredibly powerful women who now lead our stories 
Indian cinema has come a long, long way, right? We've always been OTT, over the top. But mercifully, a lot more women influencing creativity right at the very top exists today. And it's not to say that we did not have uh, women earlier in the business. The first powerful superstar boss and super and studio boss and superstar in Indian cinema was in fact a woman, Devika Rani. And she was not only the biggest star of, of her times, but she gave the industry some of the biggest legends, Madhubala, Dilip Kumar, Ashok Kumar, and of course, Madan Kumar, Ben. You know what I mean. I didn't say it, it was a show Aparna made. So, <laughs> even outside the Bombay talkies, uh, there was someone uh, called Fatima Begum, who was India's first director, you know, and uh, actually forget first woman director, she was the first genre director. She made a fantasy epic film called Bulbule e Paristan, way back in 90, 1926. And who can forget the fearless Nadia, you know, the cult uh, action films she gave us. So today I'm just very honored to sit with, uh, you know, a few fearless Nadias of our times, the Bulbule e OTT, OTT stans of our times, the Devika Ranis of uh, the Indian film, television, and entertainment industries. We have with us the wonderful Aparna, Ashwini, Monisha, Rakul, and Ashima. Thank you for having, for joining us today. Thank you so much. Uh, at the CinemaCon recently, Sony chief Tom Rotman recently uh, said, streamers do not make stars, only global hits do. Ashwini, you as someone who has dabbled both in theatrical and the streaming business, firstly, do you agree with this? And uh, I wanted to ask you if Bareilly Ki Barfi, which released in 2016? 18. 18? 18. 2016 you started making it, was it? Uh, no, 2017. 17, yeah. okay, 2018. Uh, if, if that was an OTT release, uh, would it get as much, would it get you as much recognition as uh, the theatrical did? And since we are all already talking, I wanted to understand post the entire OTT boom, post the pandemic, uh, would you, do you think that boom is responsible for uh, the theatricals, the theatrical releases not doing as well? Except, of course, a few indie films we've recently seen, like a Pathan, you know, those are exceptions. Uh, but you being a writer, director, and now a producer, I'd like to sort of understand this from your perspective. That's a very difficult question. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for calling us here. Um, so my journey, it's like no, what, 22 years now working from advertising to uh, doing ad films to now uh, making films and now producing films. And uh, I do feel that my journey as a storyteller has always been from the point of view that when I was in advertising, I started off as an art director. And uh, the first thing I wanted was that I wanted to work in an account, which was not usually uh, called for women, which was, uh, I launched Fiat in the country. And so I wanted to work on Bajaj, I wanted to work on Fiat, I wanted to work on all the kinds of brands which usually are not given to women creators. So, and at one point of time, uh, we had, uh, PNG was a huge client of mine, and uh, we, uh, we, had this, uh, we had Whisper as a brand, and I was called to launch Whisper. And at the same time, uh, with launching Whisper, uh, we, I was, uh, when asked that what does she do, what does, what other things does she do? And I said that I, I'm launching Fiat also and I'm launching Tata Indicom at that point of time. So basically we kind of ranged ourselves that it is not that we can only do brands or talk about, tell stories which are related to women. We can tell stories which are related to men too. It is just the gaze. From there when I started um, to uh, I think 2016 is when I realized that my interest in filmmaking and being behind the camera has just increased far too much now. My children are three years old and I, I think now it's the time for me to like move on. I have twin kids and uh, uh, and the first question was that, oh, you're leaving a cushion job, you have, like for, for middle class parents, my mother was telling me that, you know what, you have, <laughs> So sweet of her to say this, I always remember that. Is that, oh, you have a secretary, you travel business class, you're going to Cannes every year, you're doing all these things and you're leaving everything and you're going to start from scratch where we do not know what's going to happen. And for them, me traveling out of the country or going on a business trip was the biggest thing. Like it was, it was carrying a, a Dubai duty-free bag. 
uh, because you know my daughter has gone there, she's gone for work and she's coming back. So uh, I think our generation, we had parents who really wanted their daughters to do well, their daughters to be a part where in a boardroom you would not find only men there, but you'll also find equal opportunities for women. So for me, an organization where there were men and women equally having a role to play in the boardroom, uh, was very, very important. So when I decided to get into filmmaking, the first question I was told was that it was okay to be as a creator in advertising is because it's a business after all, but then when you get into filmmaking, not many clients are actually gonna give you ads to make. And I asked why. And I remember that a very dear friend of mine, a producer told me that that's because your gender says that you cannot be directing films. And I said, I'm gonna break this. So when Someone tells me you cannot do it. This first thing I'm going to go in is to do it. And um, uh, so I uh, slowly and steadily started, but still there were not many clients who could believe me that I could direct. Uh, I still were okay with it. Then I started doing a lot of uh, ads for Sony Entertainment Television because I was creating a lot of ads for them. And uh, at that point of time, uh, we, did, uh, we worked on KBC and we had one campaign which wanted that the, uh, the, the marketing head there, Danish Khan, said that he wanted a girl to be on the hot seat. Why it should only be men there? And we need women there on the hot seat. And therefore, we created the campaign of uh, Mubarak Ho Ladki Ho Ye. That campaign created so much of a, uh, um, like, that, you know, there can be women out there talking numbers and talking questions which need to be answered. And for the longest time, no one knew that it was a woman behind that campaign. Because we don't talk about ourselves. Let's be honest, we as women are very shy to be talking about the work we do. We just don't want to talk about it. We are okay if anyone comes and even today tells me that, you know, oh, we really like your film, we do this. Recently, I know someone, a very big producer, um, uh, Nitesh and me, my husband, we were in some uh, get together and that really big producer is a very, very nice person. He looked at Nitesh and said, sorry, I like your wife's movies more. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and he was very proud and um, uh, those are the kind of things I think we need. We need more men to be saying that, you know, th it can be an equal space. It can be more stories to tell. Um, then Bareli Ki Barfi happened. Uh, so Nilpati Sanada happened because I had done that campaign of KBC and I felt that I need to move out and I need to make a story called Nilpati Sanada, which is basically equal education for everyone, doesn't matter where they come from. And therefore we had a marginally uh, lower background society where uh, Chanda played by Swara Baskar was the one who was actually taking up the score saying that, you know what, me and my daughter, both of us are going to study and we're going to become an IAS. So uh, from there, Bareli Ki Barfi happened and it was a full out comedy, uh, uh, headlined by one woman and two men. And um, it was a lot of fun is because I kind of realized that the actors believed in me a lot. And I think that's what the most important thing is. I was, I was very sure that the actress would believe in me because it, it's, it's just a connect, it's, there's a gaze. But equally, I would really thank Ayushman Khurana and Rajkumar Rao for equally trusting in me and saying that, you know what, in a Lucknow city, right in the middle of a Sarafa, there are some thousands of crowd there and there's this Rajkumar Rao who's gonna go inside the middle of the crowd. We are all screaming and shouting to make sure that the crowd doesn't move in all kinds of languages with my team where there are a lot of girls. And they were all very supportive to give that say that, hey, you know what, she's the one helming. I think we all need respect. And um, Bareli Ki Barfi changed um, the way I think people looked at my persona personally is that it is just not about making one kind of cinema, it is making all kinds of cinema. It is just that the gaze changes sometimes. Is that I gave equal importance to what Bitti's character, Kriti Sanon was. It was about that she had a say in what she does. And the two boys also listened to her because they equally understood that she needs to have that say when she wants to know who she wants to get married to. Um, so those are the kind of conversations. It did really well in theaters. It was, it was a lot of fun, and that's a time I miss completely now, is that uh, in the interval time, there were CT bajare the, jab Rajkumar Rao aare the, and you know, pura wo gadiya band ho gayi thi, and sab 
ऐसे सिटी बजा रहे थे दे वर लाफिंग एंड ऑल दैट एंड दैट गेव मी लॉट ऑफ होप दैट यू नो वी कैन टेल स्टोरीज ऑफ एनी काइंड विच कैन बी इंस्पिरेशन एस्पिरेशन एंटरटेनमेंट बट हैज सम काइंड ऑफ वैल्यू यू टेक बैक डजेंट मैटर इवन इफ यू आर लाफिंग क्राइंग Uh, and if it is a no brainer it's okay you just have to tell stories and there your gender didn't matter this then covid happened and i've got so many messages and i'm so much i'm filled with so much of gratitude that we as makers are all because of you uh, when our audience likes our work when our audience talks about our work when our audience relates to our work to our characters is when we feel oh my god you know we have done something right as a storyteller because i do feel that we have responsibility as a storyteller to entertain our audience we are responsible for our audience and um, when we get messages that i've seen bareilly ki barfi 75 times i mean okay must be an exaggeration but that guy sitting there somewhere in in india is telling his seen the movie and every time i've seen people from all kinds of uh a uh, backgrounds saying that you know whenever we feel dull or whenever we feel uh, low or something we just want to watch bareilly ki barfi uh, i have had close friends messaging me on instagram saying that hey just watching bareilly ki barfi wanted to see that one scene and the latest one and this is after what 5 years uh, is i go to my friend's house her father is a businessman uh, whole day we were sitting together and we were all like um, working uh, like just talking and all and the father comes late in the night and he looks at me and we all having dinner and the first thing he looks at me and he says hey bareilly kaisi hai tu so that is what gives me lot of joy so i do feel that um, theatrical release is very very important but the impact which has it has on ott platforms is equally important is because it just uh, uh, it's a group viewing versus a single viewing it is a energy of a story which is carried forward for a longer time because you release a movie in a theater and you have that impact during that time and then when it goes on to an ott platform it is there for life till wow. till it changes yeah. to another platform but it's still there yeah. and that's what gives me joy is that i can keep going back to the films i want to watch and i say hey you know what this is something which we can see any time and it becomes like matter. a book almost you can it almost revisit becomes it becomes like a book and it not necessarily you need to see the whole film you can see one part of it or you just want to right. be there and uh, that's what is the fun part i think i spoke too much now, now <laughs> thank you